What's a modern-day snake oil that people buy? Story 1. Cleanses. They're basically expensive and inefficient laxatives. The best cleanse is to cut out processed food and only drink water for a while. Did it for a month and lost like 10 pounds and felt great. But processed foods are yummy and I fell off that wagon. If anyone is suggesting anything other than that, they're selling you something. And by only drink water, I don't mean stop eating. I mean that your drinks should just be water. Want to make it perfectly clear that I'm not supporting anorexia. The only cleanse I did that actually felt like it helped was a brown rice fast. Brown rice, pickled veggies, and seaweed. And gamazio for 10 days. Fixed my digestion for months. But it was food. So it was more like an elimination diet. Highly recommend it. The rest of them, you feel like crap again soon after finishing. Story 2. Anything sold by Gwyneth Paltrow. Do not, I repeat, do not put the jade eggs in your lady bits. You can get micro tears due to the porous nature of jade and infections, since porous surfaces are notorious for hiding bacteria. Like, imagine taking a pumice stone that's been hanging out wherever, making it egg-shaped, making the roughness microscopic, and shoving that in the most sensitive and soft area of your body. Don't do it. For what it's worth, she does also sell normal stuff. I got some Goop-branded sunscreen at an event, and it's a great facial sunscreen. No breakouts or just feeling greasy. It is way overpriced and not something I'd buy myself, but not snake oil. I have a coworker who used to work for her at Goop. Basically, they have great products that are deeply overshadowed by a few gimmicky products and the bad PR they get around those. If I remember correctly, and this is a secondhand account, so take it for what it's worth, the vagina candle was just a candle that Gwyneth offhandedly said smells like vagina, and some idiot marketing exec ran with it without her approval. Story 3. I know someone who bought a 5G blocker for 500 bucks. I really wish I wasn't so damn honest sometimes. I could make a fortune selling stuff like this. My grandmother bought some surge stabilizer thing to plug into the wall outlet over the summer because it said it would reduce your electric bill in three months. Yeah, your electric bill will go down in three months because you won't be running the AC day and night to keep it under 78 in the house. I popped the case open after I plugged it in for her. It's literally just a PCB board with wires that connect to the red and green lights on the front of it. Nothing about it will reduce the electricity she uses, and no amount of logic or explanation could get her to change her mind. So now she has a random block of plastic in where her washer and dryer are with two little flashing green and red lights. I freaking love all the 5G conspiracies. I heard when it was all the rage, so many idiots telling me how dangerous it was. I work in maritime engineering in a port city. I know for a fact that there are more than a few X-band radar transmitters sailing past daily, bathing the city in its EM emissions. But 5G is dangerous. Ha! <laughs> I developed migraines in 2020. Someone was convinced it was due to 5G being turned on in my area. I tried to explain the MRI results, explained the issue quite well, but they didn't want to hear it. A neighbor in the apartment was complaining about our 5G giving them headaches and just how they felt so terrible once we started using it. We hid the network so they couldn't see it on the available Wi-Fi list, and they suddenly felt so much better, and were very appreciative that we turned it off. Story 4. People peddling their courses on how to get rich. How did I get rich? I tricked idiots like you into paying me money to tell them how to get rich. Also, I'm not actually rich. Go look up all the folks who hosted shows about flipping houses before the 2008 recession. They all moved on to do seminars on how to flip houses when the market collapsed. I knew a guy who did something like that in my area. The more I talked to him about it, the more I didn't want to talk to him anymore. His basic thing was to buy an old beater house and fix it just enough to make it saleable. Then he'd owner finance the deal and make sure that the buyer had crappy credit. And then, when they missed a payment, and he really tried to sell to people who he knew would miss payments. He'd take the house back. He'd keep the down payment, usually 10k or so, according to the terms of the contract, and then find someone else with bad credit to sell it to. Rinse and repeat. He was pretty much a predatory scumbag and he was thinking about writing a book on how to get rich in real estate. 
The entire concept makes no sense. If they're already rich, why are they wasting time convincing other people to buy their courses? The grift would be a lot more honest if the courses were how to create your own course that promises to help other people get rich. My nephew was getting into these, and luckily I was able to get through to him by asking him why if these guys have all the secrets to wealth are they sharing them with everyone? If their method is foolproof, why would they teach it to the masses, thus creating competition and reducing their profits? That's the kind of secret you keep close to your chest, not one that you teach in seminars. I saw one on TikTok. The guy posted a picture of a check to himself for 500000 labeled commission. He covered the writer of the check and the routing and account numbers. As a business owner, I literally have the exact same make and model of checks that he had used in the video, and I can literally print one out on QuickBooks for any amount I want to whoever I want. Not that the check would clear, obviously, but the fact is that I could easily create the check he made out to himself in about 60 seconds if I wanted to. I brought this up in the comments and 10 minutes later the guy who made the video banned my account. Sadly, it was clearly a scam to get people to sign up for his online course, and the fact that I was banned for catching on to him made it obvious. It's sad that people with no money get scammed by these people every day. Story 5. Scientology Fun fact, the reason Scientologists disdain psychiatry is because a doctor once suggested that L. Ron Hubbard, the Scientology founder, had a severe psychiatric disorder. Hubbard, who was indeed nutty as a fruitcake, was enraged. He took that personally and never forgot it, which is why his religion won't have it. He sent his Dianetics book to the American Psychiatry Association, saying it would help people. They responded that it was nonsense and wouldn't help anyone. That's what he took personally. It's a science fiction novel. ETA, novel isn't the right word. L. Ron Hubbard wrote a lot of crappy sci-fi novels, but Dianetics is more of a sci-fi self-help book. It's almost unreadable, and I say this as someone who loves reading so much that I read even the absolute worst genre dreck, because it's still a book. Growing up, my mom suffered from Crohn's disease, and our bathroom had a rotating selection of Token, the Dune series, Clive Cussler novels from the 70s, a variety of library books, and a dusty copy of Dianetics. It was stupid and made no sense when I was a kid, and was no difference when I revisited it as an adult. Hubbard was a huckster who deliberately set out to create a money-making scam, and believed religion was the easiest way to basically print your own money tax-free. It's a bad science fiction novel. I had a professor teach a class on science fiction literature, Phil Klass, who wrote sci-fi under a pen name. He hung out with Heinlein and Hubbard on the convention circuit in his youth. He said Hubbard was freaking crazy, and said at least twice in his presence that the fastest way to become a millionaire is to start your own religion. Hubbard and his apologists deny he ever said this. Story 6. Water Alkalizing Machines, Kanjan and the like. I'm a chemist and one day, I bought a bottle of alkaline water brought it to my lab and tested the pH. It was neutral. I contacted them and they said the tests that we have weren't precise because they had alkaline molecules added with a fine-tuned vibration and blah blah blah. I was like, damn, we chemists invented pH. We own the scale. If you want to claim something we defined, you have to abide by our rules. Otherwise, create your own rules. I don't think it's something for everyone. However, I will say drinking alkaline water is good if you have stomach acid problems like I do. I have have a hiatal hernia and basically stomach acid is constantly being pushed into my esophagus. Besides the daily medicine I take, I drink a lot of alkaline water to keep it in check. Drinking anything acidic just messes me up. Just before COVID hit, my son, who is blind, had an appointment with his doctor at a local medical center. As we were leaving the appointment, we got off the elevator and an early 20s woman carrying a large bottle of water asked if I drank alkaline water, to which I said no. She proceeded to tell me how life-changing it is, has cured all of her ills, and will even help my son to see. On that day, I used every drop of self-control to not verbally demolish this walking embodiment of stupidity and just kept walking to my car. A neighbor's kid is in an MLM that sells machines that create medical water. It is supposed to cure all kinds of stuff and extend your life. The kid actually believes this stuff and spends a ton of cash trying to sell these things. Anytime he hears me or my wife is ill, he'll bring over hugs of this medical water, so we have to pretend to have drunk it. I forget the name of the company. Such an obvious scam, but he's all in and it makes him happy. Story 7. 
essential oils, it works slimming wraps, diet pills, basically anything the health MLMs are selling. I like essential oils as a way to get a pleasant smell in the house though. I'm under no illusion it has health benefits, I just like the smell. I came around to the therapeutic possibilities in a limited way. Nausea. A lot of the oncology patients wear it, and why not? Gross smells make me gag. Why shouldn't pleasant smells decrease nausea? Also, let the cancer patients have what they want. The issue with essential oils is when they are touted as cures instead of just symptom relief or pleasant feeling generators. Don't treat your high blood pressure with lavender, Jen. When I realized that essential oils are called that because they have an essence slash smell to them, my mind was blown because you know these scam artists take advantage of people who think it means important. A friend of mine's son broke his collarbone. Their chiropractor went to rub essential oil on his feet because they claimed it promotes faster healing and bone growth, and their other patient's son who broke his collarbone has been doing it, and they're all better. Snake oil as a profession. Some people genuinely benefit from them when they perform legitimate physical therapy, without having to go through insurance or after the benefits stop coming in, but the therapy's still useful. But that's not their typical business model. A small few do, and even some actual doctors have DOs instead of MDs, pulling the one or two useful healthcare approaches they use, but it's mostly just a vehicle to have more doctors without artificial degree limitations. Story 8. Plug-in slash stick-on items that supposedly save electricity or protect you from radiation of any kind, i.e. 4G or 5G. These do absolutely nothing and it's pure snake oil in the strongest sense. Absolutely all of the power saving or fuel saving devices are just a box with lights that blink when you plug it in. All of the radiation defense products are nothing more than stickers. There are zero exceptions to this rule and it's crazy to think that people are so gullible to believe these things work. I once saw one that actually did what it said and it was incredible. It was a phone case that said it blocked electromagnetic radiation from your phone and all the reviews were people complaining that their phone didn't get any signal when they put it on. 100% did what it said it would do. Yep, I do Vine reviews for Amazon and one of the items I picked out was a set of RFID blocking bags for electronic devices. It even said in the product description that they will block any and all electronic signals and that you could test it by putting your phone or tablet in one and trying to call it. Did exactly what it claimed. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and did a good review because it was 100% accurate as a product description and did what I expected it would do. Yet there were people giving it bad reviews because they missed calls and texts. Derp. Somewhat related would be EMP shields for vehicles. They are literally just LED lights wired to a car battery in a box. This 100%. I got flagged down at a gas station during COVID lockdown by a guy who wanted to sell me an air purifier slash purifier that he said would kill the virus due to ionizing the air, and he also claimed it had a strong UV light that would kill viruses. All in a very small sized butt plug looking 12V cigarette plug thingy. I mean, some of it made sense, such as UV lights at a certain frequency killing viruses pretty effectively if used on an industrial scale, but the rest was pure BS. I took a quick look at it, it had a see-through plastic top and there was a small blue LED diode under it, apparently the UV light, that was for sure nothing more than an extremely cheap blue LED, where the purifier and ionizer was not clear or obvious, but considering it had zero holers or air intake slash exhaust, and was less than 2.5 centimeters wide and less than 5 centimeters tall in total, I was sure it was BS, but I bet that idiot managed to sell some. Story 9. I had a family member diagnosed with stage 4 liver cancer and then all of a sudden I went to her house and there were multiple blue bottles in the fridge labeled AC water. One of her fellow scumbag real estate agents started pawning it to her for $40 per 1.5 liter bottle as it was supposed to cleanse her or whatever. I told her that it was literally just salt water and this guy was ripping her off and she got pissed at me crying about, you don't want me to live anymore do you? Same thing when I told her that the magnetic healer was full of crap too. This is how my hatred of MLM started. My aunt was dying of pancreatic cancer and some lady was trying to sell my mom acai juice for my aunt to cure her. We were facing a terminal diagnosis and trying to process that. It was completely cruel. When my little brother was dying of cancer, I was shocked how many people contacted me with the cure. These ranged from essential oils to magic juice mixes, 
My least favorite was a free one. Drink your own pee every morning. I saw the woman who suggested that many months later. I got to loudly proclaim that we tried her wackadoo piss trick. She was ecstatic. How's he doing? The sadistic glee I got from saying dead and walking away with a big middle finger in my heart was immeasurable. Hey there, I'm sorry to hear about your little brother. I just wanted to say, as the middle of three brothers, if I died from cancer, I'd hope that my brothers would use my death to make idiots feel their shame. It's something you don't get over, ever. Just learn to cope. Or maybe I'm just faking normalcy and that earned callousness is why I gave no craps about mocking a heartless ding-dong that suggested a 21-year-old with terminal esophageal cancer drink his urine. I mean, how? Straight from the catheter? Moron. I say we all rise up and start carrying a spray bottle of peppermint essential oil, and whenever one of these MLM healers comes at us, we hit him right in the nugget, like it's bear spray. And yes, if you were my brother, I'd absolutely shame anyone who suggested this foolishness. Right after I cured you with a tuning fork and played Sonata Number no. 5 on a wind chime and gave you an incense enema. So, not a sibling, but my last dog died from lymphoma. She couldn't go on long walks anymore, but still enjoyed being at her favorite park near my house. They had lots of benches to sit in, so we'd go for walks and take breaks when I saw her breathing hard. As a result of her not exercising as much and her medical imbalances, she started to gain weight. One day, we were at the park doing our thing, and a lady came up to me with her two kids. She says, with no introduction or context whatsoever, You know, if you didn't take so many breaks, your dog wouldn't be this out of shape. I was freaking enraged. I looked at her and said, The reason my dog is overweight and can't walk a lot is that she has cancer. What's your excuse for being a nosy freaking witch? She started yelling about me being rude in front of her kids, and some other crappy garbage. I looked at her kids, as we got up and walked away and said, I hope your mom hasn't already taught you that being rude to strangers is okay. You don't need to turn out like her. Cue more shrieking as we walked off. Felt good. Story 10. Skin Care Creams That You See Advertised By 18-Year-Old Models Who Have Perfect Skin Dermatologists keep posting on the skincare subs, basically saying most of this stuff is worthless overpriced water. Almost none of it does anything, including the items listed in this thread. The important things you can do that actually make a difference are staying hydrated, using sunscreen your entire life, and not smoking. Beyond that, there are prescription retinoids and laser treatments only available at a doctor's office. The rest is just good marketing, which is a little depressing and a little encouraging, depending on how I feel that day. What the fuck? Skincare products work, don't get me wrong. I think a lot of them are ridiculously overpriced, and some of them do sell you things that are straight BS. However, skincare products do work. Not washing my face with face wash, I'll get a pimple outbreak within a week or two. Washing it with normal soap, my skin will dry out drier than the freaking Sahara and will start peeling within hours. I don't really use moisturizer, but when I visit colder climates, I really need them. If not again, my face starts peeling. My wife uses a wide array of skincare products and it literally does make a difference. I'm not saying it's a literal youth fountain that adverts claim. It does, however, lessen and remove some wrinkles, etc., and your skin just generally looks firm slash healthier. Most people do not understand that supplements, skincare, shampoos, makeup, essential oils, toothpaste, etc., all of those products are formulated to fit a specific person, not every person. Supplements, for instance, do not work if you don't have an actual deficiency and taking supplements willy-nilly because you saw an influencer recommend them. It can do more harm to your body than good. Skincare is not formulated for every skin type. Neither is shampoo formulated for every hair type. What works for one person who ends up looking amazing will likely not work for you. People need to stop buying based on ads and influencers and impulses and actually research their skin type, their hair type, their oral health, get blood work done, etc. Then research what products work best for their specific needs and what each of the ingredients in those products actually do. Story 11. Antivirus Programs Guys, wake up. Windows Defender exists. It's really good, free, and pre-installed starting at I think Windows 8 or 7. Unless you're in a corporate environment where you need the extra features of some antivirus programs, the best antivirus program around is Windows Defender. It's free and unobtrusive. Also, install an ad blocker and learn about common scams and virus spreading techniques. I used to work in computer repair and we would show people how to install an ad blocker. 
The amount of reopened tickets for virus removal dropped drastically after I started showing this to people, so we made it a standard practice when people brought in virus-filled computers. Nice. Also, people need to learn to not click on the most suspicious crap online. Ads have a lot to do with it. Most websites show ads that are hardly distinguishable from actual content, and these ads could be anything and everything, and take you to any website they so desire. The worst offenders are clickbait ads that appear on local news sites just below the article. People are going to click on 25 celebrity facts you didn't know and get redirected through 50 tracking pages and one page that asks you to install a virus and set your homepage to Free Search Pro, which does nothing but insert more ads into a Google search because they just click accept over and over again trying to get to some piece of promised subpar content. The best antivirus is not being an idiot on the internet. Don't download those executable files from untrusted sites. I get messages from a hacker all the time saying how he installed a Trojan on my computer. That's not how the Trojans work. You have to run the program with the Trojan embedded in it. That's why it's called a Trojan. It's the hidden enemy within the seemingly innocuous file. You have to let it in. That said, if you're torrenting games and such, there's a high likelihood of installing a virus. The ones putting the torrents out aren't doing it, but it's a fairly common practice to take the same game, embed a virus, and re-upload it. I used to go to people's houses and do virus cleanups and removals. I had two things I'd tell people when I did. One, get a good antivirus. This was before Windows Defender got good. Two, follow the golden rule of the internet. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So you just so happen to stumble on a website that just so happens to scan your computer and find that you just so happen to have 1,000 viruses that are doing terrible damage that you just so happen to have not noticed, and this website will call you to call them, and they just so happen to be willing to take care of it. That sounds way too good to be true, because it's not. Close the website, force a reboot if you have to, and when you're done rebooting, run a virus scan. Story 12. Fat-free anything. Typically, it's chocked full of sugar or some other crap that's much worse than a bit of fat. Fat is part of what makes food taste good. Take it out, you gotta add something else in there to help the flavor. The same goes for the texture, too. But it's low fat. That means it's healthy and will help you lose weight, right? Yep. Reminder to everyone that sugar companies literally bribed scientists to alter literature reviews and research in the 1960s to shift the blame for poor health outcomes to fat and downplay the role of sugar. Coca-Cola also paid millions to researchers who sought to play down the link between sugary drinks and obesity. My favorite part about this is the fact that you can buy or bribe three Harvard health scientists to destroy millions of lives for a mere $50,000 in today's money. This is one of the reasons I choose to believe MIT is the best university in Massachusetts. A highly dubious product was featured in a commercial, and it kept referring to results from a university study. One day, I happened across an article that mentioned how the university study they set up a table in a public area on a college campus and hands out free stuff to college kids, along with a questionnaire with questions designed to get positive answers, alongside the goodwill from being given free stuff. The whole thing kind of strikes me as funny, except for, like, the scammy aspect of the whole thing, where they sold stuff that doesn't work to easily dupe people for more than they could probably afford, which is definitely the not funny part. Story 13. Juice Cleanses You're not flushing toxins out of your body by only drinking fruit and vegetable juice for a week. That isn't how human anatomy works. If you've got a liver and two kidneys, you're doing just as much detoxification as you can. The reason I think these will always be a thing is the bulk of people in the US are bloated from the standard American diet. If you are bloated 24-7, to the point it feels normal, and you go on a week-long juice diet, you will feel amazing. Of course, as soon as you have that next morning fast food biscuit, you'll be right back to where you were. This is very true. I'm skinny as hell and have trouble keeping any weight on, and I even suffer from it when I have periods that I'm lazy or extra busy and I'm not able to cook regularly or eat good food, and I'm just surviving on pizza or Chinese takeout. It does make you feel noticeably worse on a day-to-day -day basis, and then when you switch it up and stop eating low-quality food all the time, it makes you feel better surprisingly fast. Story 14. Copper Bracelets 
My grandma was crippled by rheumatoid arthritis from her early 20s, lived well until her 80s, and spent nearly three quarters of her life in excruciating pain. After she passed, we were going through her things and found a pair of copper bracelets from the 30s or 40s. Obviously, they didn't work. My wife was crippled by rheumatoid arthritis too, and I can totally understand the desperation to find something that helps ease it. She's never not in pain and isn't even 40 years old yet. It's such an awful condition. I see you are in the UK. Don't let her accept the pain. Go to all hospital appointments with her. She'll get better care. Seriously. As well as help advocate with her. Yeah, she's always in pain, crying, can't do stuff, etc. These meds aren't doing the job. Where do we go from here? What's next? Is there something better? If she's not on a biological, it sounds like she should be. As a class of drugs, they have been a real game changer in the treatment of autoimmune illnesses. In many cases, completely halting disease progression. The older drugs like azathioprine, methotrexate, even PRED just don't compare. And NSAIDs, even new ones like celecoxib, don't do much IME. If she is on a biologic, like Humira Biosimilar, Infliximab, etc., sounds like she needs to change. There are loads of others now, and more in the pipeline, as well as new classes like JAK inhibitors, which I know very little about. Story 15. Anything from Amway. My stepbrother is deep into it. Call it the business. Drinks super oxygenated water. Huh? My dad was an OG Amway guy back in the 90s. Believed in that crap through and through. He was convinced he was going to go diamond and be rich. He literally incorporated that crap into his actual religion. So instead of buying my brothers and me clothes or shoes or proper meals, he bought a crap ton of their products for the house and himself. A metric ton of their religious self-help tapes he never listened to and would stay out all night contacting, aka going to the local mall to solicit Amway to unsuspecting passerbys. MLMs in the days before social media took actual effort to neglect your kids. My parents used to be in Amway around the mid-2000s and they believed that if they recruited people and made enough sales, they would go diamond. A fancy way of saying that you'll get rich. They bought a lot of their products and my parents said that we weren't allowed to buy anything that's not from Amway. They parted ways with them sometime after 2011. Story 16. Those detox patches you put on your feet. Supposedly, they suck the bad stuff out of your body, and the proof is that they turn black. Actually, all that happens is your sweat makes the stuff in the patches turn black when it gets wet. Came here to say this. You can put sterilized, distilled water on those pads, and they'll turn black. It's just moisture that does it. My wife bought us some and I told her I thought they were snake oil. I gave them a shot and they do make your feet feel good after you sleep with them on. Hard to explain, but your feet kind of feel refreshed when you take them off in the morning. I know it probably doesn't do crap and maybe it's just placebo, but it feels like it does something. Story 17. Healing Crystals I have a friend who swears that she can feel the vibrations of various crystals, lol. I love her, so when I find crystals, I give them to her. It makes her happy. That's the part I like. As a geologist, the funny thing about all of this is that they aren't completely wrong about crystals producing vibrations or energy. Quartz has an interesting property where it vibrates with electricity or produces electricity when squeezed. The exact mechanics of it are complex, but it's a property inherent to the unbalanced silica structure. So your friend isn't entirely wrong. If you touch a quartz with a static charge on you, it will vibrate slightly. And if you squeeze one, it will produce a charge and a small electric field. Almost all sold crystals for healing are different types of quartz, like amethyst, opal, etc., since it's common and cheap. But that energy isn't going to heal you. It's just a static charge. Story 18. Not an item as such, but going to see a chiropractor. Chiropractors are at best feel-good placebo and at worst injury-inducing quacks. If your bones are out of alignment, it's because you got hit by a dump truck and popping your leg is the least of your concerns. They do not fix anything. A doctor can fix things. A physical therapist can fix things. A chiropractor may give you good advice and then pop your back. If you want that relief, get a massage session instead. It will arguably do more good for you. So, chiropractic is a mixed bag of nuts. The problem is that the training is spotty at best and there's no real medical licensing going on. Does popping bones work? Sure, sometimes, for certain people with certain conditions. Who are those people? No idea. The others get body bone cracking that does more harm than good. 
one Cairo in town could actually be highly trained in physiology and actually have a clue what he's up to. The Cairo in the room next to him could be a crystal healer working her essential oil magic and good vibes to cure all that ails you. It's just wild what they class as medicine. Story 19. Not really what you were asking, but a month ago I met my friend's sister for the first time, and she's in her second year of school to become a nurse. We didn't discuss her schooling, but somehow got on the topic of her boyfriend being sick and her having him put slices of onions on the bottom of his feet inside of socks while he slept to draw out the toxins, to boost his immune system, and I just kind of smiled and nodded and moved on. It just blew my mind that a person could be in their second year of nursing school and not understand how stupid and baseless that is. It will really blow your mind when you hear my mother-in-law has been a nurse for 30 years and still tries to put onions on my kids' feet when they're sick. It's an old Mexican thing, and it's hard to beat old habits. They also run an egg on your body to remove pain and bad spirits. Then you crack it in a glass of water overnight, and the more white it is, the more pain it will remove from you. I don't mind the egg thing because the process is very therapeutic and calming, so it does actually help my anxiety. Unfortunately, getting a nursing degree, or even an MD, doesn't mean that you can't be gullible and into woo or conspiracy theories. My mom worked with a nurse at a university health center, who would tell the women she saw that their birth control pills were mind control drugs created by the patriarchy. My mom ended up being the triage nurse, and said women stopped getting assigned women with reproductive health questions. Nurse here, it's the Dunning-Kruger effect. We get the minimum amount of science and anatomy knowledge to do what we need to do, and that makes a lot of people think they know a whole lot more than they do. I know a lot of smart nurses. I also know a lot of dumb ones. Couple that with the fact that our profession draws conservative types, and you'll get people with a small amount of medical knowledge and a penchant for conspiracy theories. I have family members who are anti-vax nurses, and this is exactly what happened. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story to these that you would like to share with us, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like, and don't forget to subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel, where we have hundreds. Thanks again, and see you next time!